Good morning, Year 7. I hope you had a nice weekend. Um, I certainly did. I hope you got out and enjoyed some of the weather. Slightly, almost spring-like weather, wasn't it? Anyway, listen, we're doing a recorded lesson today. Just uh, just this one, because I want you to um, do some writing. Uh, the rest of the week are all going to be live lessons, but just this one is recorded. So you're going to need a pen, your exercise book, and a copy of the Badger extract, which is on class charts. But don't worry if you're not in a position to print it out or anything, or you're doing this on your phone or whatever um, because I've attached or rather put the extract onto a slide so get those things get back uh, write your title and underline it in your books but before we go any further how many films can you name starring talking animals Madagascar there that's one just make a list don't spend any more than five minutes on that thank you well, there's a couple more there look Zootopia and Ratatouille um i don't know the aristocats um lassie uh skippy they're all a bit skippy was about a um a kangaroo that could talk and lassie was we well, couldn't actually talk but it can communicate with people and it kind of solved problems unbelievably and uh lassie was a dog uh a border collie that could uh that was very intelligent and used to go on adventures well, there was another thing called the littlest hobo as well. Anyway, there are loads of things. And when you write for these characters, the characters that are animals, it's called anthropomorphic writing. Now, that's all that means is um, you know, uh, giving voice to animals. That's all that means. Um, so don't worry too much about that word at this stage. That's why I called the lesson just writing a character, because that's really what you're doing. So with that in mind, we're going to look at the pictures of animals on the next slides or slide. And I want you to think, what name could you give them? What is their personality? And I want you to create a thought bubble for them that shows their personality. So I want you to pick three of them and do that. You'll see on the next slide what I mean. And here's Percival. He's a, a platypus. He's posh and snobbish. I must do my nails and today. I must get my nails done today and my beak polished. So therefore, you've, you know, immediately created a, a character, Percival the Posh Platypus. Even It's even alliterative. So let's go on to the next slide. Now, on the uh, top left there, you've got a koala bear. Very cute. Uh, along to the right there, to the right of the koala, those are meerkats. Um, I think that's an orangutan to the right of that. Um, and that's uh, a llama, I think, just doing the chewing there. That, that's a, uh, I think it's a screech monkey, isn't it? They're, it's kind of a monkey, but they're really loud and slightly terrifying. So that would be a good one to pick, actually. What would you call Christopher the screech monkey or whatever? And, uh, you know, why is he always shouting at everybody all the time? And then to the right of that, there's a rather passive looking newt. Um, so anyway, pick three of those and uh, give them a name and uh, then a, create a thought bubble for them you can draw them if you want but don't spend hours doing it because you've got a bit more to do um you don't want to go over the hour because you've got other lessons um create a little thought bubble that um uh you know with them saying something that sort of shows their personality obviously this feeds into the wind in the willows because of all of the different um animal characters in there so you need to be you need to have them in the back of your mind while you're doing this well, we haven't met Badger yet, have we? But on page 39 to 40, um, I'm going to I'm going to read halfway down 38. It's the start of the Wild Wood, chapter three, to the bottom of 39. This is us hearing about um, Badger, but we but we haven't met him yet. So what do we know uh, about Badger before we've even met him? The mole had long wanted to make the acquaintance of the badger. He seemed, by all accounts, to be such an important personage and though rarely visible to make his unseen influence felt by everybody about the place. But whenever the mole mentioned his wish to the water rat, he always found himself put off. It's all right, the rat would say. Badger will turn up some day or other. He's always turning up. And then I'll introduce you. The best of fellows. They must not only take him as you find him, but when you find him. Couldn't you ask him here, dinner or something, said the mole. He wouldn't come, replied the bat simply, the rat simply. Badger hates society and invitations and dinner and all that sort of thing. Well then, supposing we go and call on him, suggested the mole. Oh, I'm sure he wouldn't like that at all, said the rat, quite alarmed. He's so very shy, he'd be sure to be offended. 
I've never even ventured to call him at his own home myself, though I know him so well. Besides, we can't. It's quite out of the question, because he lives in the very middle of the wild wood. Well, supposing he does, said the Mole. You told me the wild wood was all right, you know. Oh, I know, I know, so it is, replied the Rat evasively. But I think we wouldn't, we won't go there just now, not just yet. It's a long way, and wouldn't, and he wouldn't be at home at this time of year anyhow. And he'll be coming along some day if you'll wait quietly. The Mole had to be content with this, but the Badger never came along, and every day brought its amusements. And it was not till the summer was long over, and cold and frost and miry ways kept them much indoors, and the swollen river paced past their windows with a speed that mocked boating of any sort or kind, that he found his thoughts dwelling again with much persistence on the solitary gay Bradger, who lived his own life by himself in his hole in the middle of the wild wood. So from that extract, year seven. What do we uh, what do we know about Badger? He's solitary. He lives on his own. He's very shy. At the same time, he's quite a serious person. He's shy, but he's not. You get the impression of shyness, but not someone who's to be messed about. Quite a serious person. So make three bullet points of the things that you uh, that we got that, that we know about Badger before we've even met him um, from what I've just read, which is page thirty nine to forty. And here's the extract um, uh, of when they, they meet the badger. The badger, who wore a long dressing gown and whose slippers were indeed very down at heel, carried a flat candlestick in his paw and had probably been on his way to beg when their summons sounded. He looked kindly down on them and patted both their heads. This is not the sort of night for small animals to be out, he said paternally. I'm afraid you've been up to some of your pranks again, Ratty. But come along, come into the kitchen. There's a first-rate fire there and supper and everything. They shuffled on in front of them, sorry, he shuffled on in front of them, carrying the light, and they followed him, nudging each other in an anticipating sort of way, down a long, gloomy, and to tell the truth, decidedly shabby passage, into a sort of central hall, out of which they could dimly see other long tunnel-like passages branching, passages mysterious and without apparent end. But there were doors in the hall as well, stout, open, comfortable-looking doors. One of these the badger flung open at once they found themselves in all the glow and warmth of a large firelit kitchen. The kindly badger, th badger thrust them down on a settee to toast themselves at the fire and bade them remove their wet coats and boots. Then he fetched them dressing gowns and slippers and himself bathed the mole's shin with warm water and mended the cut with sticking plaster till the whole thing was just as good as new, if not better. The Wind in the Willows is an anthropomorphic story about Ratty Mole, Badger and Mr Toad. We've discussed anthropomorphic. It's a lovely word. Um, it simply means animals behaving like humans. And you've all just we've just read the extract about Badger. So if you've got that, great. If not, you can uh, look at the slide in just a minute. So I want you to highlight any description in that text that makes him anthropomorphic like a human. Right. So you should have four or five things there and then uh, pick one of them explain why it makes him seem human and what it tells us about Badger. Now I want you to uh, look back at the pictures we looked at earlier. You uh, gave names to those little animals, didn't you? And uh, gave them a thought, or three of them, and gave them thought bubbles that uh, showed their character. Uh, I want you, to, you want you to create your own anthropomorphic character. You can use one of those or you can think a new one. Think of a situation to put them in, such as their car has broken down, and write, um, uh, let's say, eight sentences that uh, that show their character. So they could be in a broken down car, they could be in a boat, they could be on a train, they could be doing anything. It's completely up to you. Eight sentences, and that's the thing that I want you to uh, upload to class charts um, year seven. So well done. We will be back to the live lessons tomorrow. So enjoy that, and I will uh, um, speak to you then. Thank you. <laughs>